so as I'm looking at like the last video, the part one that I just put up, I'm laughing at myself because it's like I have this attitude as if, you know, it was something I just went through and and gotten over. You know what I'm saying? But this that's not it. You know what I'm saying? The whole thing consumed me. It consumed my life. It consumed my thought. It consumed my thought process. It consumed uh, what I was feeling and everything I was doing. You know what I'm saying? It was like something that I could not shake. It was something that I felt so deeply in my heart that and I couldn't get it out. It was like a stain on my heart. You know what I'm saying? How I felt for this person. And the fact that I was downplaying it uh, is it kind of makes me laugh, you know what I'm saying? Because it was such an integral part of what raised me, right? And I say raised me because it's like, when once I uh, got on that spiritual journey, you get raised over again, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, the Holy Spirit is in control at that time. But at, simultaneously, I'm learning through that uh, twin flame journey, right? I'm learning through that reflection of the self, you know? That, that person that is a literal reflection of the love that I need to have for myself, you know? And it was, it's coming to that realization that, that person is who they are. You know what I'm saying? The yearning is so painful because the self feels neglected, right? But the self doesn't feel neglected by that, only by that person, right? Because you think it, it feels like, you know, you're neglected by that person, but the self is feeling neglected by the self. You know what I'm saying? Because we haven't, because the self hasn't, hasn't shown the true love to the self. The self is consumed by the ego. The self is looking outside of itself for the satisfaction. You know what I'm saying? So that twin flame journey illuminates that, right? That twin flame journey makes that love, that need for that love so intense, so intense that it consumes you that so all you can focus on is how to fix it. You know what I'm saying? It's how to get some sort of relief, you know what I'm saying? From, from that <laughs> feeling. That yearning to be loved is no joke, right? And then when you have a face to it, you're looking for that person. Well, I was looking for that person constantly, wherever I was, I was looking, hoping to run into her, hoping to hear from her. Every single for years, this is for years. Every single, uh, you know, phone call, I was hoping, I was hoping it was her. Every single encounter, I was hoping it was her. When I turned corners, I was hoping it was her, you know? It was like agony, agony, true agony, right? True agony. I, if somebody would have cut off my finger, it would have been less painful than that. You know what I'm saying? It, it hurt so bad, so bad. And that was simply the bigness of my desire, right? It was the bigness of the neglect that I felt for myself. You know what I'm saying? That's what that was. And I was searching for it, searching for it. And all the time, I'm neglecting myself, neglecting myself. You know, so it becomes bigger. It becomes more intense. It becomes uh, more heart-wrenching, you know? But another person's reply, another person's response is something that you cannot control. It's out of your control, right? No matter if they're a twin, no matter if they're a soulmate, no matter if they're your parent, you know, your mother, father, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who they are. We cannot control other people. You know what I'm saying? So what do you do when you can't control what you're yearning for, what you feel like you need, right? You give it to yourself. That is, it forces you. It forces you to turn to yourself. You know what I'm saying? And it forces you, as, as you turn to yourself, as you go through that pain, as you go through that agony, as you grieve, as you uh, purge, right? You, you see yourself, you have to, you have to, because there's no other option, you know what I'm saying, but to see yourself. And when I was going through it, when I was going through the twin flame journey, not only was I begin getting heartbroken by her, but from everybody in my life, you know what I'm saying? It was, I think, you know, one person who showed up and they were like, you know, they congratulated me for, for moving forward in my life, for um, leaving the house and, and, uh, <laughs> and moving across the country, one person, and she's the one that cares, you know what I'm saying? She's that one that cares, but everybody else, they didn't give a damn, you know what I'm saying? And they were showing themselves to me. And and so all of that, as people kept falling away, kept falling away, kept falling me away, I was the only one left. It was me and spirit, you know what I'm saying? And that's when the feeling of loneliness kicked in, and it kicked in hard, you know? But that loneliness, like I said in the other video, it turned to being alone, you know what I'm saying? And it turned to as I was getting to learn myself, as I realized that I had no choice but to be there for myself, that loneliness turned into comfort. You know what I'm saying? Not comfort in the loneliness, but comfort in being alone because I was my friend, right? My, my voices, my, how I spoke to myself started to change. How I treated myself started to change. And it started to change for the better. I was giving myself the things that I wanted another person to give me, right? And it wasn't just the twin flame, but it was, every, you know, everybody that I loved, I wanted them to love me back, but they couldn't. They couldn't love me back in the way that I loved them. You know what I'm saying? And it's not uh, to say that they're bad or they're wrong or anything like that, but like they are going through their own journey. You know what I'm saying? They are going to, through the journey of seeing themselves. So they can't love you back sometimes. You know what I'm saying? Especially if you give and give and give. And you know, you I, I give from a place where I don't want to see anybody hurt you know what I'm saying if I've been hurt I don't want anybody to hurt like I've been hurt you know and that's the place that I give from but it's too much sometimes it's giving too much for nothing in return and that's what I would how I was taught to you know that's how I grew up giving that's how I grew up living giving with little in return you know what I'm saying but 
that is the neg- that's what that's why I felt that big feeling of neglect, right? So as these people were falling away, as I started to feel more and more neglected, I needed to realize that it wasn't that I didn't have to give to everybody to earn love. You know what I'm saying? That I didn't have to give to everybody to be love and to and to feel love. You know what I'm saying? That I had to give it to myself. And that's not necessarily love. That's being sacrificial, you know, to to love so much and not get anything in return. It's not pure love, right? And that's because it's unbalanced. It's not uh, sharing, right? It's not a sharing of love. It's a giving, a pouring out of yourself. And it tempts the ego to become narcissistic, right? So that's why I kept attracting those narcissistic relationships because um, it was a temptation. It was, you know, a temptation. It was like a magnet to people who... uh, wanted to take right if I if I was one that wanted to give there were people who wanted to take right and that's what they did right because that's what their ego was telling them to do my ego had conditioned me to overgive, and their ego conditioned them to overtake you know and that's why those relationships came together and I got into so many narcissistic relationships you know and not only relationships but situations that caused me to give more than uh you know more than necessary and receive little in return right so everything in my life was a reflection of that And if you've seen any of my other videos, it sounds slightly redundant, but that's because it is. You know what I'm saying? This is all a journey to self, right? Why are we here? What is this world? You know what I'm saying? We're on a giant circle in the middle of where? Nowhere. You know what I'm saying? We're here as a learning ground. This is a simulation. This is this is for the expansion of self. This is for us to reprogram and recognize the self. You know what I'm saying? That's why we're here. So everything that we're learning leads to greater expansion of the self, which is greater love for the self, you know, and that love extends outwards because that's what love does. Right. So once once we love the self, we extend our love outwards and share in love with others you know what i'm saying with other selves you know what i'm saying actual selves not the ego right we learn to see beyond the ego we learn to live beyond the ego things that exist exist within eternity there's nothing that exists outside of love you know and love comes from the self because we are love so in order to actually love in order to actually live in existence is to extend ourselves in love but to learn you have to learn the self first in order to extend in love right you can't neglect the self and think and think you live in a state of love that's living in a state of the ego whether you're the one pouring out you know feelings of love towards others or you're the one um you know, whether you're the victim or the perpetrator, it doesn't matter. If you're living through the ego, you're living through the ego and you have to learn to love the self. You have to learn that you deserve more. You know what I'm saying? I was the one that was uh, <laughs> uh, not a victim, but you could say, um, you know, I had a bleeding heart in a sense, but I had to realize I deserve more. You know, that was my journey. And it wasn't a punishment. It wasn't a punishment for being good. There's no punishments for being good. You know what I'm saying? And there's literally no punishments for being bad either. It's about learning to come to the self, you know? So it's, it's about going through it all to come back to self. And that's not to say to let go of the desire to be with somebody, right? It's to say when you get with somebody, you learn how to love them wholly, right? And not love them to get something just just to fulfill a hole inside of you or to get something in return. You guys are whole people coming together. So you share in that love. You share your love and you extend in love because there's no holes in the other. You know what I'm saying? So your your cup overflows just that when you come together with another person after you learn who you are. You know what I'm saying? All those things that are wanted um, in life become greater, become, um, you know, more expressive and more attainable because you know who you are right so you can discern what is right for you and also and none of that makes that twin flame any less important right the love is still there right you i I will always love that person i will always think of that person i will always know that they were an integral part of my growth uh, and of um of who i am today right and who i am becoming you know what i'm saying they're they're you know they're always going to be with you on your journey but even though the journey is about the self They are special, you know, it's not just, it's not only you seeing you, it's you seeing them too. And when you see them, you see um, perfection, you know what I'm saying? You don't see any flaws, you don't see um, what they're doing right or wrong, you know what I'm saying? It comes, there, you see them so clearly, you know what I'm saying? And that, whether you end up together or not, you know what I'm saying? it's special it's a special type of connection and it's i before i like i hope i I wish i never went through it but it's like it's it's something sacred to see a person so clearly you know what i'm saying to see beyond the the self that they put on you know what i'm saying because that that clearness that you see is so absolutely perfect you know it is it is And just to know that they exist in a world where you exist is um, is something to be grateful for. It's something to not be taken lightly. You know what I'm saying? And as you go through the journey and even though it's about the self, you don't take that lightly. You know the love that you have for this person. You understand 
how deep it is. You understand that it's not only about you, but it's about them too. You know what I'm saying? But you can't control them. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And and just because you're not with them physically does not mean that um, you're not with them energetically. You know what I'm saying? Nothing can, that love is undying and, and nothing can cut it off, you know? So for me, it's like a jewel that I carry with me, right? It's something special that I carry with me, you know? Not just the journey and what the journey did for me, but them, their soul is, is something special that I carry with me, you know? So the actual journey and actually what it did for myself, you know, and, you know, what it does to the stuff, it's easy to explain, but what it is what it actually is, like the love that it actually is, it's not easy to put into words, you know, it's not easy to explain at all, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> because it's like the certainty, like you certain, the certainty of, of how you know and understand this person is so great, you know.